welcome to another episode of Animal Adventures. I will be your host, Shane Brown. Along with me is Ed Laquadera. And if you are new to the show, uh, anybody that hasn't watched last month, if you could just give us a quick rundown on your facilities and your role in said facilities. Sure. Um, well, my role is just kind of to oversee everything that goes on, uh, myself and uh, Brian, who's the, the general manager or director. And um, basically what we do is we take in un unwanted exotic animals, um, people have them as pets or wherever they come from, and then we uh, find homes for some, keep others, and then we use them for educational programs. So we travel, pretty much we'll go anywhere in the United States. Um, and then uh, where our facility is open to the public, uh, Six days a week, we're closed Mondays, but if there's no school, then we open on that day. But if somebody shows up, we won't turn you away. We will let you in and happily take your Your hours change towards like school vacations? Like um, vacation. We're pretty much uh, 10 to 5 Sundays or 12 to 5, but we've been discussing uh, opening up at 10 on Sundays as well, just because people are showing up so early. How about so. the expansion project? Last month we were talking about it. I think you were about about ten about ten thousand. You said you were out. You're just getting closer. We're getting we're getting closer. We're still you know you you have a you say you need ten thousand more, and then the carpenters come in and go, hey, this this and this. We need to do this way instead of this way. Um, like we have a condensation problem that we thought we fixed with fans and all that, but now we need insulation and stuff. So we're we're getting you know. We're, we're getting closer. The project is really looking good. It's actually looking like a facility. We have a lot of the cement and stuff poured, and five out of the six exhibits, uh, the ponds and everything are set, uh, or four out of the five, and uh, the glass is in, and that will probably be installed next week for all the cages. So uh, we're getting closer. We definitely need more more funds, but... Um, how big How big of a facility? This, this one is just a reptile house, and it's 1,000 square feet, and it's housing uh, five. It's, animals housing uh, an anaconda, which is one of the heavy, th probably the heaviest snake in the world, the reticulated python, which is the longest snake in the world, um, American alligators, a Nile crocodile, and um, Asian water monitor, which is, the Asian water monitor is pretty cool. We had them here last time, and that's the uh, second um, heaviest and third longest lizard in the world. And yesterday, we just started a project with uh, Framingham State. We're testing bite powers on those monitors. Uh, the one that was here, Jekyll, is part of the... Oh, yeah program and comparing their bite pressure with Komodo dragons. So it's kind now, of fun. Before we bring any of them out, somebody, somebody was asking me today, because this is, you also live, your house is also. Yes, my house, uh, my wife and five of my six children. Uh, my oldest daughter is married and has her own husband and her own kids, but uh, they come over. I mean, uh, this has got to be phenomenal. This is going to be every kid's dream, because I was thinking of it myself, just being a kid and having all of these animals at your fingertips. Yeah. You yeah. Kangaroos and Oh yeah, I mean, to me it. it seems like it would be a blast. I'm no, it is a thing. blast. Um, you know, my daughter, my four-year-old daughter's in the bathtub yesterday. My African serval jumps in, you know, <laughs> and uh, we all the baby animals that we take in, uh, the high-end ones like kangaroos and exotic cats and monkeys and all that are all raised in my home with my wife and kids. That way, uh, they can uh, imprint on the on the on my family, and we can have 24-hour care. Some of the ones we take in um, are like primates, or usually preemies, or you know, the cat, the mother wouldn't feed them. So these are animals that basically need 24-hour care. So the cat still lives in my bedroom. And as far as all the kids in the audience are right now, the talking that we're doing is extremely boring. Well, yeah, so guys. we should probably show them some animals. So we, you guys want us to bring something out? Yeah. Yes. Right. yes. Yeah, we'll yes. take uh, Bob. Bob. Who we got first coming out uh, here? Bob the Chinchilla, Brian. Not only can run a mean computer, but he also can tackle chinchillas <laughs> if called upon. So uh, this is Bob, and I know um, you know a lot of people celebrate Christmas and uh, Hanukkah and different uh, holidays. Like this time of year, people get gifts, um, whether they uh, have any beliefs or not. Everybody gets a present usually this time of year. And one of the things people get are animals. And um, I'm not against people getting animals as gifts. I gave my, uh, one of my best friends uh, his son a lizard you know, uh, for Christmas. But the thing is, you gotta, they've been asking me for six months and they had done their research and they knew which one they wanted and I just had this lizard and I was too cheap to buy him a separate <laughs> gift. So I said, hey, I'll just give him something I already have, right? Um, Regifting is okay, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, chinchillas, a lot of people will get these uh, as pets. People see them, everybody loves them because they are super cute. Um, the biggest reason why people give up the chinchillas usually is uh, they're moving, the kids are going off to college, or some people just get bored. Um, most rodents, this is a rodent, so if you have a, um, like a hamster or something like that, they don't have the life expectancy of a chinchilla that can live 18 to 22 years. So these guys here could get a chinchilla today, and then they're going off to college, and the chinchilla is still alive and well. 
Uh, so that's, you know, that's one of the biggest reasons, just people moving or you know, going off to school. Um, the other thing is a chinchilla is not like a dog. That you, you know, you're not going to train him to come when he's called. Uh, people will call us up and they'll say, I left my chinchilla out in the living room and now I can't find him. That's because he, you know, after he ate through all your television wires, he then now is stuffed under your sofa. Because chinchillas are designed um, with a collapsible skeletal system. So in the wild where they live in the Andes Mountains, they can squish flat like this. So they can hide underneath things. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and then they can also squish like this. So they can squeeze into cracks and things like that. So other animals, owls and other so predators can fit can get into Yeah, almost every rodent can do that. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of animals can really uh, squish up. So these guys are, are nice little animals. They're a low maintenance animal. Um, they eat, you know, a pelleted food. You can give them raisins and sweet potato and a few things for treats. Uh, they don't eat a lot or drink a lot. And um, I know kids don't like when we talk about poop, but we have to. Uh, when they poop, it's very small. It actually, not to give you a bad image of your next ice cream sundae, but it kind of looks like a little ice cream jimmy about the same size. But you can't, don't eat it. Hey, don't eat it. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's dry, so if it poops, like if this one pooped, uh, you could pick it up and it's not like gross or smushy or anything. It's just dry. It's not a big deal. So they're kind of a, a cool little animal. Yeah, you can right put them down. And Bob here is, was born at our facility and he's on. Um, no, a, lo a lot of these guys are how you say like dog tame. Yeah, actually, one of the problems we ran into yesterday trying to do these uh, bite tests um, is my animals were so friendly, they would just gently grab stuff. It would put a, like a mouse on top of this bite meter. Yeah, not alive, we buy them frozen. And then um, the animal would just gently pull it off instead of biting as hard as they want. So we're, we have to figure that out. But yeah, most of our animals are, are very friendly. This guy is adorable. That's the biggest draw for somebody to come to us, because if you come to our place, it's not a big fancy zoo. It's more like going behind the scenes at a big fancy zoo, where all the chaos is, and the animals are being fed and cleaned, and nails clipped. All right. So this is a skunk, and his name is Buckwheat. He has three brothers, Spanky, Stymie, and Alfalfa, from the Little Rascals. And um, Skunks are uh, pretty cool. They're not rodents, but they can squish themselves uh, really flat, too. And a lot of people, they look at him and they think he's a badger because he has different colors, kind of like a washed out color. And you can see here in New England, a lot of people have called me and, um, and or even if I'm at their house doing a birthday party, they'll say, hey, we have an albino skunk in their property or, you know, a brown rare skunk. So it, I, evidently it's not that rare because especially for some reason out in the pepperal area, I run into a lot of people that see albino skunks. So I think they're becoming uh, more common. But if you see an animal that looks like this, he doesn't have to be the standard black and white. Uh, this is absolutely a skunk. And of course, you do not want to um, pet one outside because they can uh, bite you and they can spray you, then you'll be all stinky, That's right? The biggest and everybody wants to know is why won't this guy? This guy is descented. Uh, but however, even experts can make mistakes. We had a skunk dropped off and we were told it was descented and the people bought it online, they told us, and they may have been telling the truth, we still don't know for sure. And they said it, um, they didn't realize skunks are against the law to own in Massachusetts, so you can't go to a pet store, you don't buy one online. The laws are very, very strict because they can carry rabies. Our skunks have their shots and have to be tested and everything, and they don't come in contact with anything that would have rabies, so they're totally fine. Um, but these people dropped off a skunk, and we were taking them on shows and everything. And then one morning, we get up, and my house smelled like skunk. And my wife said, you know, my house is attached to the animal center, like we talked about, by a breezeway. Uh, my wife said, check the breezeway. Maybe a skunk got into the breezeway overnight. And I said, no, I shut the doors. And I went in. There was no skunk in the breezeway. I went to the animal building. The skunk that we were told didn't have spray, spray had spray. And it sprayed out my whole building. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> so but this one, we promise you, does not have spray. And uh, skunks, um, their sense of smell is, is OK. Their eyesight is uh, OK at night. Um, it's not the, you know, like an owl or anything like that. Uh, night. Yeah, mainly night, but they mostly rely uh, on their sense of smell and just being diligent, never giving up. You kids have all heard that before, right? If you want to be good at something, you, like guitar, you can't pick up the, car, the guitar and take one lesson and go, it's too hard, I quit. Right? You have to, be, you have to keep trying, you just can't give up. And that's how skunks survive. It's like they wake up and they go like, today I will spend my whole time eating. And they just uh, forage for food and they're not fussy eaters. Is anybody out there a fussy eater? One of my daughters is so fussy, Noelle. She just. What do you like? I love eating. 
You love eating? I like, I love eating too. It, but skunks, they you know, I've never offered a skunk food that they wouldn't take, so. Now, is there a difference in coloring between the males and the females? Nope. Uh, that's, the, that's what people have told me, but I've, you know, not, you're the person to ask. Yeah, I would say uh, no. I've said, you know, def definitely not. There's not, a, you can, um, they do, you can in captivity, uh, you know, have skunks, um, have children that have different colors. So you can select people that uh, breed them at farms and stuff, can select what color and things like that. So but that's people that have seen them there that have uh, a long, they're mainly white, which is a small black shirt, and all oh, that's the female. I don't know how anybody actually yeah, makes no. this assumption. So. No, that's, um, unless somebody did that on purpose, unless somebody genetically bred a skunk to for all the females, and that, that's really Now these guys are only coming out hard. at night. So yeah, I mean, you, you might around. see young skunks in the morning, um, especially um, if a young skunk, um, you, know, you know, his mother is, is off hunting or has wandered away, and the young skunks will get confused. So you can see skunks uh, early in the morning, but mostly it, it's at night. And if you do see a skunk during the day, it doesn't mean he has rabies, but you do want to stay away. And if there's a skunk or something in your garage or any wild animal, you don't really want to uh, mess with them, you know? Which you wouldn't do that anyways, would you? If you saw a skunk, would yeah. you run up and give it a great big hug? When I was a kid, you could buy them as pets. They would actually, you really? Yeah, they actually make great pets, but... When did they, you know, out, when did they outlaw? It's been a while, probably at least 20 years or so. Because, why? why? Um, from what they say is they're afraid that um, somebody's captive skunk could end up with rabies or, you know, interacting with wildlife and that kind of stuff. Is No, as far as your opinions are on, on um, <laughs> for anybody that wants, you know, like you have license, you have yeah. trained for all this stuff. Yeah. You know, for anybody else that's thinking like, oh, I would love to have a skunk for a pet, even descented or, or uh, boa constrictors or something like that, any advice that you would have for somebody? Um, my best advice is just to really st uh, learn ab about the animal first, because a lot of times we see an animal and it looks so cool and you want it, and then once you do the research on it, you realize it's, you know, it's completely nocturnal. Like everybody, uh, one of my shows coming up, I'll bring a kinkajou and I'll get into that where it's one of those animals that we've actually taken them in where people have spent three to five thousand dollars for them online illegally. And you should never break the law anyway because that's just never, not a, never a good idea. But the animal becomes very vicious, you know, and so sometimes the ones that look the cutest are make... Because you still have to remember they're still yeah. wild, wild animals. I you know, um, you know, I have plenty of friends that keep exotic animals. Just do your research, pick the ones that you know you, that you like, and make sure it's a good fit for you. And then make sure that you're not buying something out of state or online that's against the law, because you can get yourself in trouble. You know. Because I could see want one of these guys. Yeah, I think. See, I think these should. It, well, I think these should be legal. I think everybody should be able. I think you should be able to go to the local pet store. I'll get myself in trouble for saying this, <laughs> and and buy a descented skunk because they're awesome. They litter train. They're just sweet. And uh, if you hey, lost them, come on, this is this guy's adorable. Him. I mean. I, you know, he's decent. Me and so my I, friends I all had skunks that. growing up, and we never had problems. Really? And I know tons of people. Um, there we go. I, I, I got to give him I don't want to, but I'm going to. Here we go. He's got a big mouth, huh? This one probably weighs around 55, 60 pounds, and um, he could be, you know, uh, uh, that many years. I've grown him up in captivity when I've got him as babies this big in 12 years. Typically in the wild, um, the rule of thumb is it's about uh, a year per pound, and it's, you know, it's not about an exact how, science. How so. old? Uh, this one could be anywhere. I'm going to say he was lighter when I got him. He's gained some weight. I'm going to say this one's probably, you know, could be 40 years old. What is and the oldest one that you had? Now, I know you just okay. had one. I, that I had up until 2008, it seems like just yesterday, I had Igor, who was said to be the largest uh, freshwater turtle uh, on record at the time. He was well over 200 pounds, and we estimated his uh, death at over 200 years of age. He died of natural causes. I bought him off a restaurant in Louisiana in uh, 1997 and I had him until 2008 and um, his just it was a natural I've process, seen I've so. seen the videos of him. he was monster. yeah he was a monster you know and so this guy has plenty of growing to do um, you know uh, alligator snaps are found in the south and uh, they're not I saw that. they're not found around here now the snap see how I'm putting my hand here kids if you do this with the snapping turtles we catch around here they'll come right back and grab you uh, this is just for an alligator snapper which is not found in New England that's where we live they have a big head and a short neck and a lot of people think these are really ferocious animals it's actually a very shy creature and the only reason why his mouth is open is because he's a boy and the boys have never been filmed out of the out of the water in the wild so he's just nervous once he goes in his dark box his mouth will close and he'll be uh, totally 
fine, but he's not a, a, a vicious animal, he's just very shy. With that said, if you came up here and you put your finger in his mouth, that would be a very bad thing, right? Because these guys can bite extremely hard. And this is the heaviest of freshwater turtles, and they can exceed uh, 200 pounds. The girls are also very interesting because uh, as far as we know, they only lay their eggs every other year, and that's the only turtle that we know that, that doesn't lay every year. And uh, so that's what most research shows anyway. So it's a pretty cool turtle. Um, it's one of my favorites. And the, uh, the common snapper that we have around here is similar. The head is not as big, but their neck is a lot longer, and they are pretty aggressive. And inside the mouth on this one, it's hard to see, but there's a, uh, a gray piece of flesh. It looks like a tongue, but it's technically called a, a fleshy appendage. And they, they, what they do is they camouflage uh, in the water, because they blend into the mud and everything. They open up their mouth, they pump blood into that a piece of flesh and it turns from gray to like a pinkish red and, it, and the blood makes it wiggle around. And then fish and frogs and other turtles and even crayfish um, have all been uh, filmed swimming inside the mouth thinking the mouth is a cave and that's a little snack. So he just sits there <laughs> and he hunts that way. And if you, let's say this cucumber, because I ran out of carrots, was a little fish or something. We can do the big end here. There you go. Let's just say this little thing is swimming around and sees that, and oh. right? there right. you go. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the crap out of so, here. Um, and he's very good for making salad. There okay. you go. Okay. Pretty better cool. than a food processor. We were talking about that, too. So when I say not to put your hands near his mouth, do you guys see what I'm saying? Oh, but they get their name, two, two things. They call them alligator snappers. You'll see when I take out a little alligator, uh, Darth Gator, in a little while. Darth the, Gator. The base of his body, where the tail meets the body, sorry, uh, kind of has three rows. But these guys, um, I don't want to uh, get too gross, but these guys actually do eat uh, alligators. And I know this from my wildlife studies and from one instance um, where a place uh, had um, an alligator snapper eat their six foot alligator. So um, what happens, they got their mouth open and they're, they're wiggling it and they're waiting for something to swim in their mouth. But then if nothing swims in their mouth and they see an alligator and the alligator's legs are dangling under, under the water, they'll swim up and um, They can them. overpower an alligator. Uh, well, this guy here could easily, um, he's in a big tub inside of another pond with alligators from probably what two and a half to maybe four feet and like a four and a half foot crocodile in that pond if i put him in that pond he would eat ev everything <laughs> okay. so, so this is uh fiona and she's not a baby she's actually uh 10 she turned 10 uh, august 21st and she's the world's smallest kind of fox she's an african fennec fox and they have the largest ears compared to their head from any fox. Now, somebody asked me, what about the bat-eared the bat -eared fox? The bat-eared fox has bigger ears, but not in comparison to their head. And she's pretty amazing because she's designed to live in the um, African Sahara Desert, which is very, very hot. It can be up to 140 degrees during the day for several hours. So you kids know if you go outside during a hot day, you know, it's not easy to stay outside unless you're swimming or something. So for that reason, they have fur on the bottom of their feet. That way, if they run across the hot sand, they don't get burnt. Now, they are mostly nocturnal, but if they get up at night and they go hunting a few times at night and they don't catch any food, they will get up and hunt during the day. They call it opportunistic. So um, if she's you know, up during the day and there's a little a lizard running around, she'll run out of her den and she'll get it. So she will have to run across the hot sand. The other thing um, she has is fur in her ears. Not a very attractive feature on most of us, right? But on the fox, it's very important because what, what kind of uh, uh, storms do we have in the desert? Do you kids know? What do you think? Sandstorm. So you have a little fox like this, you're running around the desert, and then the sand kicks up. And see the way the fur is in her ears? It's placed this way, thin here, and then it, it bunches up over the ear canal. So when the sand storms come, she lays flat like that. That keeps the sand from going in her ears. Then she takes her bushy tail and wraps it around her face to protect her face. And she can just uh, uh, hunker down and wait for the storm to be over. Um, the other super cool thing she can do, well, they, they pump blood through their ears to help them cool off. There's so many neat things they do, but she can pant. Do you kids know what panting is? You know when a dog gives you a dog grunt and they go, <sighs> or on a grown up getting off the treadmill or the elliptical? We do that, a lot of that, right? What the fox can do is she can pant more than any other mammal in the whole world that we know of. She can pant 721 times in one single minute. If a person tries that, they get dizzy and sick, so don't try that. So she has to do that to cool her body off because it's so hot. No, nocturnal. Does everybody remember what nocturnal is? 
Stays yes. up wet. Oh, what is wow. nocturnal? Anybody? Anybody? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, how about you? That's right. it, correct, right? Sleep all day, yes, okay, wake yes. up at night. Which doesn't sound too bad, right? No, I'm, I'm more of a nocturnal person. I wouldn't mind <laughs> doing that. Who would like to touch the fox? Now, she's super cute. Her name is Fiona, but same thing. We want to pet her in the back, okay? That's okay. Do you kids think you, we should see one more animal? Yeah. Anybody up to seeing an alligator? Yeah. All right, what? so give us... All right. So... <laughs> so this is a six foot table, right? Is that a six foot table? Grab yes. that tail shank. Sure. And get right that, to the end. So it's right. pretty close. Yeah, we'll get a little more. Yep. About a six. Yeah, it's about a six foot, six foot two alligator. So it's a good size animal. Probably weighs about 75 hey, pounds buddy. or so. <laughs> and he we tape adorable. up his mouth. We use electrical tape, and just so everybody knows, this tape that we use does not hurt the alligator in any way. Um, I was one of the scientists back in 2001, tested a bunch of different tapes on alligators, like hundreds of different tapes, to make sure that when we secured the mouth, we weren't hurting them. Because if you look at these dots, they look like whiskers. Those are actually sensors that help them feel underwater. So electrical tape and medical tape were the two tapes that didn't do any damage to these sensors. We use the electrical tape because it's cheaper. And it stays on when it gets moist. Is it definitely strong enough? Yeah, um, they don't have any opening power, but where I actually seen this, uh, you know, happening live, where somebody, a strong guy, said, "Well, alligators don't have any opening power. I can just hold his mouth shut." And he tried to hold his mouth shut, um, and the alligator shook his head and bit the guy's hand. So, if the alligator, technically, if you had his head wedged so he couldn't move his head at all, you could, with your hand, hold him down, but you could never just grab an alligator like this and hold his mouth shut for too long. When we tape him up, um, this one here, uh, I took him out of the pond and I put him on the ground and then I, um, I didn't sit on him but I sat over him and then I held his mouth like that and then a friend of mine who uh, just happened to be there, uh, I handed him the tape and he taped it up. So, <laughs> Joel, you, just, you never mind. So, um, yeah, so the alligators are awesome, and when I was a kid, alligators were endangered, and now there are millions, over a million alligators in Florida alone. Uh, this one here is a boy, he could grow, right now he's six feet, he could double his, his length, but he could, right now he probably weighs under 100 pounds, I'm guessing somewhere around 75 pounds, he could go to 1,000 pounds, so he could be like 10 times heavier, more than 10 times heavier than he is now, twice as long, so you're talking about as wide as this table or wider. Now this is one of the guys that's going to be going into the, the expansion? Yeah, his, uh, we take in a lot of alligators because um, uh, that's one of the things I specialize in is any kind of alligator, crocodile, crocodilians. So typically um, a lot of the alligators that uh, need homes come to us, whether it be an, an educational company that they had an alligator and outgrew and now the place they're supposed to send it back to can't take it anymore. What really happened um, over the last couple of years, you used to be able to buy alligators as pets in New Hampshire and Rhode Island. And then so if you bought them at a pet store in New Hampshire and Rhode Island, the pet stores had it set up so when it got too big you could return it. And then they had a relationship with the farms in Florida. They would send it back to the farm. The farms would grow them up and use them for breeders and keeps, you know, everything worked out fine. And then when they made them illegal, you had literally tens of thousands of people in New Hampshire and Rhode Island in a mass because people would cross the lines to buy them that had, um, you know, had pet alligators that then went back to the pet stores to return them and the pet stores can't take them anymore. So now they have no place to put them. A lot of people, um, I get a lot of criticism when I tell people I think, you know, if you want to own an alligator, you should be able to own an alligator. Um, I've owned them my whole life and my kids have all grown up with them and we've had no injuries. That my only injuries I've ever had is on rescues, never from my own. And if you study the animal, um, I've met plenty of people that keep alligators and they they have the money and the space and the knowledge. I mean, it's not, I think if you can, you know, obviously this is not as, you can't trust an alligator like you do a dog. I always tell people, they say, what animals do you totally trust? I trust my own three dogs. Other than that, I trust no animals. I love them all, I just don't trust them. I'm not gonna go, well, he's, he, he knows me. You know, I feed him, we gotta. So even if you do buddies, own it as you know? a pet, you should still keep, um, 
You should still keep his mouth taped. Oh, we even, never. Even, no, no, we, no, 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 we never tape his mouth. No. The only time we tape his mouth is for educate when we travel him because it's um, the insurance company requires it and the law requires it. So let's say I got in a fender bender and I have a six foot alligator running around my van. Nobody wants to open up your van and help you if there's an alligator that doesn't have tape on its mouth. Um, so he, we took him out of the pond. We put tape on his mouth, and the second he gets back right after the show, he goes right back to the pond no tape. And this guy, I don't know. I can't tell you the last time he traveled probably maybe july or something you know sometime over the summer and i don't know when he'll yeah travel again the only reason why i took him today is because when i opened up the the gate he was sitting right there and he was an easy catch no so a few things about alligators like uh, i don't know what's true what's not but yeah. I, now do you tip him over and rub his belly no. when they fall asleep? No. That's uh, okay. If you, that, if you tip over an alligator and rub his belly, he'll pee all over you. Um, <laughs> see his... Um, how much... Are you okay on time to... What's that? Are you okay on time to explain this? Yep, okay. you can, I so, can edit. You can do it. Right, if you look at the alligator's head, let's say my hand is his head, and right here there's a bundle of nerves. So what people do is they take the alligator's head and they snap it up this way. That um, pinches all the nerves and it get, makes the alligator so he can't move his head. And then... Uh, once they go back further, it cuts off all the oxygen and blood to his brain, so it's like if you were choking him. So what they do is they snap their head back, uh, or if, you, if I took him and I, you flip him over, the head is so heavy it falls, right? And then they knock themselves out, and then people say, and then they rub their belly and say that they, that puts them to sleep. Now, I can't back this up, but I can tell you from my own studies and my own experience and my own common sense that if you do that to an alligator enough, it, I believe, and I believe I can back it up, it will cause brain damage. Now, I tell that to people in my industry, and they say we have no, uh, nothing to back it up. But here's what happens. Once we become scientists, we lose common sense. I was talking to, with, an, with another scientist yesterday, and when they want to do a study on lighting, whether you need UV or heat. And I said, I've already done that study 15, 20 years ago. If you take a UV light and a heat light, the animal will always go to the heat. UV is not even really necessary. Um, and all the breeders know it, and all the farmers know it, and all the lay people know it, but scientists have not proven it, so they don't accept it. But they don't really know animals sometimes. So you have to have somebody like this guy I was working with from Framingham State. You know, we're both scientists, um, and uh, we both work with animals. That seems to be the best thing. You know, get your hands dirty and get some education behind you. But um, yeah, so that's you know. one of the last things. Because I know I, we must be running short on time. I'm not sure. And I know that none of the kids, I'm sure, have ever heard this. And I, I bet your question is, can you pet it? Yes, I'm going to so feed you, you, you to them you're gonna be as soon to. as we're done. That's how we're going to do the credit. You need I know, we got you. <laughs> we but some you. of the older people might remember this. Now, when I was younger, we used to hear about the people that had them as pets and flushed them down the toilet and there were alligators in the sewers. Not true. Anybody okay. else? So, no? Yeah, I, I heard about that. They actually, actually, when my I was a kid, one of my favorite movies, up. Alligator, started that yes. way. The alli yes. <laughs> you know, with the, the $20 budget. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the alligator, they should redo that movie now. They have good graphics. Well, I think we're running out of time, guys. So we're going to say thank you to Ed. Thank and to Brian you. and for well, all of their friends for coming. for coming down. So much more difficult to just pretend that there's an audience here. Can everybody know? look so. over at that camera? Say goodbye. So we'll see you next month. All right. See you next month. We'll see you month. guys next month on yeah, Animal right. Adventures. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Bye.